ever wonder why some people always get lucky finding amazing deals at yard sales and you always seem to find nothing? Well, here's the thing. It's not luck. So I have been hunting at yard sales, estate sales, flea markets, you name it, for literally decades. I've accumulated an entire lifetime of hints and tips and experience and knowing what does and doesn't work. And today we're going to start part one of a two-part video that's going to give you a reveal of all the accumulated knowledge that I've, uh, that I've developed over the years uh, for hunting. And some of it is counterintuitive. Some of it will run contrary to what other other people have told you, but I'll give you my rationale and anecdotes as we go along. So let's start with finding yard sales. I avoid yard sales that have been advertised on social media, meaning a Craigslist or a Facebook or, you know, your local community, whatever, the local newspaper, uh, advertising that they're going to have video games. Yep, I will largely avoid those sales like the plague. So here's the, here's the list of reasons why. Um, you are not the only person that's going to see that advertisement. And that means you can be absolutely certain that every other video game collector slash reseller in your geographic area is going to be making that a stop on their yard sale route. Depending on how juicy the items that are listed are, uh, you're going to have people showing up probably earlier than you. As a matter of fact, here's the thing. If there's particularly good stuff listed, you can almost be sure that people probably knocked on their door the day, the night before. In some cases, I've seen instances where people will go and find out where the person lives the moment the ad hits and just show up, cold call, come up with a variety of excuses from like, ah, you know, I'm not going to be around this weekend, but I'd really like the games for my kids. For my local church, what have you. Can I please purchase them now? And you'd be surprised how often these tactics work because a seller, A, most importantly, likely just wants to get rid of those games. They're not necessarily doing it to get top dollar. They may be intimidated uh, intimidated <laughs> by a strange figure just showing up at their door and looking to be passive to get themselves out of that situation as quickly as possible. Yes, it is dirty pool, so to speak, but there are people that do this on the regular. And I'm not suggesting that that's a tactic you should employ. Don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating for these tactics, but I'm suggesting that you are probably going to have poor to no success if you show up on a posted opening time for a yard sale advertising video games with any expectation of those games still being there, unless, of course, they're wildly overpriced uh, or you have a thing for Skylanders and Xbox 360 sports games, in which case, by all means, please proceed. And here's another, actually, quite frankly, a bit sinister reason why I avoid the yard sale ads that are just too good to be true. Believe it or not, there are some resellers who, will, with intent, create fake yard sale ads that look amazing, uh, hoping to draw everyone's attention across town away from something that they know or they have some intel is a juicy hunting ground. So, yep, that is something that has actually happened before on more than one occasion, uh, and you have to be very careful about that. If a yard sale looks too good to be true, it just might be too good to be true. You should check out the listed address and see if it's a real address uh, and proceed with extreme caution. Oh, another thing I've seen. Here's a fun anecdote. Uh, when you have sales that are listed, and for that matter, sometimes this also applies to individual items on a Facebook marketplace or something that are just amazing, unobtainium things priced uh, in such a way that the seller clearly, quote unquote, doesn't know what they have. Oftentimes, you'll have what I like to call white knights, folks that uh, like to price police and may not necessarily have the resources to make a purchase, but will do whatever they can to keep someone else from getting the deal as well. And oftentimes, these folks will reach out to a seller and tell them, hey, not for nothing, but that Ninja Gaiden 3 cartridge is worth a lot more than $5. Just want to let you know. I couldn't begin to tell you how many times I've reached out to someone who had posted an ad uh, who told me that people were telling them what the item was, quote, really worth. 
So be careful when either in a yard sale ad or for that matter, you know, a general marketplace listing, understand that again, lots of other people are seeing this ad uh, and you're going to run into a lot of characters that are trying to manipulate or otherwise derail the deal. Um, so that of course uh, lends one to say, all right, Doug, don't go looking for uh, yard sale advertisements with video games. Well, what the heck am I supposed to do? Well, use your intuition here. I think you get a lot more uh, likelihood of getting a good deal freestyling. That's right. Find neighborhoods and areas in your geographic region where there's just lots of densely packed neighborhoods. If you live in a place with... Um, Housing communities, uh, especially here in the South, that's very prevalent where you go to a community uh, where there's maybe 100, 200, 300 houses all in one, one densely packed area. Um, you will often find several uh, unadvertised or I'll call them ad hoc or pop-up yard sales. Uh, those those can be absolute gold because those were not advertised in advance. And the only people that were really stumbling on them are people that just happen to have business in that neighborhood. In other words, um, almost all of the professional collectors and resellers uh, go to places with advertised sales. There's really not too many people that are going to be your competition. They're just going to be randomly driving through neighborhoods. Now, it's important to understand um, that your competition, yes, probably hasn't been there yet, um, and you have an advantage the less people showing up. But now you've got there, you're at this sale, and whether or not you see games right away when you walk up to that walk up that driveway, it's important to understand how to deal with the sellers at this sale. Because here's the thing: from the moment you step out of your vehicle and you're within the you know visual range of the seller, there is already an impression being made of you by the seller. And the very first communications that happen between you and that seller are more important important than you could possibly imagine. We'll get into exactly why in just a moment, but I want you to keep that in mind because this, I think, is the biggest thing that I've seen that is a differentiator between people, again, that have consistent success at yard sales and people that even if they go to dozens of yard sales, just always seem to turn up with nothing at all. So let's go ahead and drill down a little bit more into how important this initial interaction with the seller is. But at the end of the day, keep in mind, yard sales are a numbers game. You have to think long term, you have to think long game. You can't decide that you are successful or not successful at yard selling based on a small data sample. And honestly, I'll call a small data sample your last 100 sales. It's that much of a long game. So keep that in mind. So anyhow, the moment you get out of your vehicle and you begin to approach that yard sale, it's very important that you have a big smile and you give a friendly, genuine hello to the seller and ask them how they're doing. How's their day going? You just want to keep it very general, very friendly, very professional. You should look clean cut. You should not look like you're hungover. You should not look uh, disheveled. You should look clean. You should smell good. You should be friendly. You want the best impression possible for that seller. Your attitude and energy that you present, whether you believe in this sort of thing or not, I can tell you we all give off energy, and the energy you project is going to be the deciding factor and how they answer the big question. I think you know what that's going to be, and we'll get to that in a minute, but it is going to be a huge factor. The first types of things you want to do in terms of interactions with that seller after the, hey, how you doing? How's your day going? Is you want to take an interest in something at the sale, even if it's not a video game. And actually, it might even be better if it's not a video game. Uh, something that, that seems to talk about that person's hobbies or interests. Um, maybe it's, you know, uh, a chessboard or something that, that implies something that they're interested in. And you want to establish that you think it's pretty cool and come across with the impression that you like this sort of stuff too and that you appreciate 
the things that are important to that seller. You want that established in their mind. Hey, this is a person that respects me and the things that I'm interested in. And you know what? Here's the thing. I understand that this doesn't have to take up a lot of time. You do not have to spend a large amount of time building this relationship. Everything I've said to you so far is something that can be set up in 60 seconds or less. If you have a routine, you know how to do this, and you do it consistently. I know particularly if you found a community yard sale and you want to get to like 50 sales in two hours, you're still going to be able to do that. Trust me. But you are setting yourself up for success. So once you have that rapport, you've asked them how they're doing, you've got the friendly energy, the good vibes, you've created that connection of respect. Now it's time. Now it's time to ask the question. Now, if you find anything that's games or game related, it's very easy because as you go and you hold up, hey, what do you have on these games? And then you can ask, you know, I don't suppose you have any other old games you'd be consider you you'd consider letting go of. I really like this sort of thing. And obviously, if there's nothing game related, you can also open anyway because now you've got that rapport and that respect. So they're going to be open to you making requests. Whereas if you're seen as a total and complete stranger, they may not be as willing to have that conversation with you. But you could still go ahead and say, you know, hey, you know what else I love is really old video games. I don't suppose you'd have anything like that hanging around that you'd want to get rid of that maybe you thought who. Ah, would want that. That is the key moment right there when you're doing that, um, that if someone has already got a good feeling about you, they're more likely to consider A, acknowledging that they have this, and B, actually taking the time to saying to whoever else is helping with the sale, hey, hold down the fort. I'm going to go dig through the bedroom, basement, attic, whatever, because I know I've got a tub of some old stuff. Uh, I've got a great story here. The, the, these stories are all things that have actually happened. Uh, but one of my favorite things that happened once was, I'll never forget this, I went up to a yard sale and I'm walking up the, the driveway and I'm in the process of just making some small talk. And I was just about to ask about games when all of a sudden there was a commotion where a big one of those big giant pickup trucks with the, the giant wheels, uh, the big Ford 1F50 that's like a mini monster truck. A uh, fella comes out of the truck, really like practically does a wind sprint up the driveway and just goes, you got any old video games? And it was just so aggressive and overpowering, like guy in a monster truck comes up and it's a big, tall guy that's like huge dude. Um, and everyone's kind of horrified here. Uh, and the seller, the, this nice, you know, middle-aged lady is just like, no, like, like scared no. And the guy didn't say, okay, thank you, have a nice day, turns around and does wind sprints back to his truck, jumps in, literally peels out uh, to get to that next sale. And we all just sort of like look around, take a breath, and be like, well, that's a thing that happened. Um, but then I continue. But here's the thing. Couldn't have been more than about a, a, a moment or two later. Um, after that happens, uh, an older lady, uh, I'd say probably mid to late 60s, uh, walks up the driveway, goes right to that seller, and says, do you have old Nintendo games? I'm not kidding. This, this older lady was also on the hunt for the tender tapes, uh, was not aggressive, but was just like very like intent, like matter-of-factly, tunnel vision, oblivious to the scene that just happened, and this poor woman who was already frazzled is like practically shaking, and she just said no, because there weren't currently any games spread out and she just turned around and goes okay and she just kind of and didn't do wind sprints just walked back didn't look at anything else got in her you know uh, uh, town car whatever she was driving i think it was like a lincoln and s drove off and it was just me and like i think one or two other people at the sale and everyone took a deep breath and, and i looked at the seller and i said are you okay like are you all right is everything cool like that was messed up and she said to me, does everyone want video games? And I, I said, you know what? People love to collect video games. It's very cool. I love to collect video games. I'm a child of, I said, I'm a child of the Nintendo games, the cartridge games. And you know what she said to me? She said, you know, I do have, I do have my husband's old Nintendo games. He doesn't care about them anymore. Um, you want to see them? I said, yeah, I would like to see them. And a couple minutes later, she comes out with a tote full of Nintendo 64 games and the deck itself, 
um, in a couple of controllers. I said, wow, that's really cool. And thank you for, for bringing them out. She's like, you're the first person to treat me like a human today. We talked about them a little. And long story short, I bought the whole tote, got a deal that I couldn't say no to. And there you go. And the moral of the story again is, you know, whether they say yes or no is not necessarily predicated on whether they actually have the games. It's how you treat them. It's, it's how they perceive you. Do they feel downright threatened by you? You're never going to get a positive answer to someone that you're threatening. Sometimes, even if they like you and they know they have games, they won't even mention or think about broken stuff because they assume that it's worth zero. And I'm thinking specifically, although it can apply across the board, to handhelds. I can't tell you how many times I've gone through this whole process and I've had maybe someone brings out a couple of Game Boy games or DS things and I ask, hey, do you have any old systems? And they say, well, you wouldn't want that. They're broken. Because here's the thing, the average person doesn't know that there is a resale market, that there's an active uh, four-parts market for these old handhelds these days. So even with the best of intentions and trying to help you, they're not even going to think to bring that out. So if you've got this you, the conversation going, and there might be the implication they have handhelds, always mention, and by the way, I am more than happy to take a look at any broken stuff that you have because I happen to fix them as a hobby. I fix them up. And I can't tell you how many times I've had amazing things brought out to me uh, that people thought would just need to be thrown out at some point. Um, and of course, they, you know, great, great stuff. I've had broken, broken N64s brought out to me that just had the uh, memory pack missing for whatever reason. I have had um, broken DS consoles where the battery just needed to be replaced. Lots of those. I've had broken handhelds where the hinge had had become dysfunctional, and those are relatively easy to fix more often than I could imagine. And these are folks that are either practically giving them to me or they're just a few bucks. Um, again, if you know the, the game you know, world enough, you know that you could sell these things for parts for quite a bit these days, particularly the 3DS era stuff. Um, so there's a tremendous amount of opportunity there, but you just have to make sure that you're asking and you're talking about these things. Now, another thing I want you to, to understand Understand, and this is one especially true talking about the concept of the numbers game. Oftentimes, you'll have situations where maybe someone does legitimately have something. It's buried in a back of a closet, and they don't really have the time to look for it right now. Or oftentimes, I hear, yeah, well, it's at my sister-in-law's house, so on and so forth. And that's not to say that they're not being truthful. Uh, it's just a matter of they're going to say, hey, you know what? Can you, you have any information, a number? You should always have. Not just, you know, let me, let me give you my number to put in your phone. You should have professional, polished cards that say something along the lines of, I buy old video games, your name, your number, email, um, and that you can hand over. And I know that there's going to be some pushback here because I, I hear people say all the time, no one ever, ever calls back. It is, it isn't true. For the most part, um, if you lifetime get a three or four percent callback rate you're probably first ballot hall of fame on this but you have to understand there's a couple things number one when you do get called back they oftentimes end up being home runs in terms of the things that you get there was an interesting situation that happened not too many weeks ago where i was at a sale and um there was a really cool, cool fella, an older fella, um, and he was kind of running the sale by himself. And we got to talking and asked about the video games. He said, I didn't have video games, but I have an old computer stuff. And I said, yeah, I do vintage computer stuff. And we talked a little about what he had, and he actually had some stuff in his house, including uh, a big box from what was described of big box vintage PC games. Uh, and he said, that's not something people care about, right? And I said, well, it's a more of a niche audience, which it is, but I'm totally interested in that stuff. This is a conversation that probably wouldn't have even happened with just the pure got any tender tapes fellas. So long story short, this was a case where the business card worked. I said, here's my card. It's got my number. Uh, it sounds like from our conversation, his wife had gone out to run an errand. She was going to come back in a bit. It would effectively be able to relieve him, uh, and he would invite me back to look at the stuff. Sure enough, we stayed in the neighborhood and hunted because it was a big community sale. About a half hour, 45 minutes later, my phone rings. Sure enough, it's our seller. I come back. He uh, lets me come inside his house. 
he had an old IBM 5150 for you guys that aren't old vintage computer people. It's like the first IBM computer, super cool thing, and a giant box full of big box PC games. Again, one of those things where if I didn't give that number out, give that connection, that deal never would have happened. So like I said, always be willing to do this. Know it's a numbers game, but don't demure from doing it just because you know that you're not going to you're not going to hit that home run every time. Because like I said, when those home runs hit, man, they're sweet. You have to be willing to go long haul and grind on this. Uh, the most successful yard sale hunters I know have been doing this for a while, endured the cold streaks, and embrace the uh, amazing, uh, you know, great streaks that happen. Some people will do a little bit of a modified version of this, and they'll ask um, if if I give you my number, just could you text me to make sure that the number came through. And oftentimes they'll do that. But what that gives you the opportunity to do is then reach out to them. Give it a couple days. Don't be too, you know, aggressive and say, hey, it's Doug. We talked at the yard sale. Just wondering if you had a chance to look for those things you talked about. And just a reminder, I am very willing to, uh, you know, pay you a fair price for this stuff and tell you what you've got uh, at the very minimum. That's the way I like to do it. I position it where at the minimum, I promise I'll tell you what you have and I'll most likely make you an offer for it. Um, and again, I've had success with that. You have to be careful. If you just put a lot of pressure on someone, they're going to ghost you. So there's a, kind of a little bit of a, a you know, a, a back and forth on that. But again, it is a way that maybe you might bump your, your uh, rate of closing these types of deals one or 2% more, but in the long run, it's totally Totally worth it. So that's a lot of information to absorb. And I hope that you've heard some things throughout this that sparked something in your mind. You're like, oh, wow, I think I'm going to try this. I can assure you, if you put everything I've said here into practice, I'm telling you, your results are going to improve. I guarantee it. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a little preview. The second part of this video, we're going to talk a little bit more about what to buy at yard sales how to negotiate with sellers. That's different from how to talk to sellers to get the, the games to come out. This is how to negotiate price and terms and conditions with sellers, how to deal with your competition, because of course there is competition out there and more things uh, related to yard sale hunting. So I really hope that you look forward to that video. Of course, the best way to know when it comes out, click that subscribe button so you'll get notified and I'll see you next time on It's All Dug and Games.